Hello everyone. Um, I'm actually recording this video on my cell phone, so I'll try to make it quick, but I wanted to share with you all my testimony of how God showed me hell. I struggled for the longest time I struggled believing that a loving God, my God, your God, everyone's God, whether or not they know it or not, would create a place that was so torturous, that was so opposite of everything that he was. A place that lacks love, a place that lacks joy, a place that lacks mercy and grace I struggle with this and so and, and the biggest thing is because there's so many pastors and churches and theological scholars out there that they don't believe in it and they don't preach it and they don't teach it you know but the Bible says that it is a real place therefore it must be a real place so anyway, I, I prayed to God. I said, you know, Lord, if this is a real place, like, can you... I dropped my phone. So, you know, if this is a real place, can you, can you show it to me? Can you, can, can I, can you put it in my heart where I just know it? You know, can you show it to me, but don't, don't leave me there, you know, I, I just only want to watch it. I, I mean, not even, I don't want to watch people suffer. You know, I, I want to just know it's a, 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 a real place. So if I can just, you know, see the, the layout or anything, you know, just, I just need to know that it's a real place. And I prayed this, you know, for the longest, the longest time. I'd say actually for probably a few days, you know, three, four days and nothing. One day, my daughter came into my room about three, four o'clock in the morning, running into my room, and she had told me she had just had like this awful nightmare, this terrible nightmare. And at the time, she was probably about seven years old. And um, and so I said, well, baby, tell me what happened. So she said she was in this foreign land, This and these aren't her words. She said she was in a place with pyramids, and so, but it was a place she had never been before. It looked foreign. She didn't really understand the language because people spoke with, uh, they spoke another language, and they, and they spoke with like a really hard to understand accent, but somehow she knew what they were saying. And so she said there was this evil king there, and this king came to her and told her, he said, if you worship me and you pray to me i will make you queen over all the souls and she told him she said you're only supposed to pray to god and worship god so he got upset he asked her the question two more times totaling three times and she told him no all three times he said okay well i'm going to bury you and if you can get out, then I will let you go and you can be free to leave my land. But, you know, you have seven days to do it. So he said it was going to take her seven days to get out of the dirt. So he buried her. And as she was trying to get out, you know, he, he turned her position upside down. So she thought she was digging upwards to get out, but she was actually digging deeper into the earth. So she was digging she was digging deeper. And so she told me, she said, well, she had dug so deep. It was more than, you know, more than the, the time that, that he had said it would be, it was longer. So by the time she reaches the bottom to the point where she can't dig anymore, she gets to this place where it's, it's almost like a giant cave. And she sees this giant, as she calls it, giant swimming pool of lava. And there's screaming there there are people there there's yelling and it smelled like burnt rotting eggs these are her words and she said that when she got there the guy the king asked her again what she said was weird because he was on top of the earth and then he went on he was underneath the earth too he was inside the earth 
and he asked her again, if you worship me, I'll get, I'll let you out of this place. I'll, I'll let you out. I'll let you go. And she said, no, you're only supposed to pray to God. And so he held her upside down by her feet and he was preparing to like put her into like this giant, as she calls it, swimming pool of lava. And when her face gets this close, this close to touching the lava, she says this hand that was white. Like, and when I say white, I mean like the color white, like light. Like when you think of um, the color light, you know, you have blue, red, green, purple, you know, the color white, you know, but it was like a light. It had a glow on it. And she said the hand was a thousand years old. It was a thousand years old and it reached down like quickly and it yanked her out of his hands and yanked her out and it pulled her up so quick that whenever she whenever she fell back into her bed you know she could feel like she could feel it's almost like a roller coaster so you know how your stomach drops that's what she felt she said she felt her stomach drop and it dropped into her body and then she woke up and she was scared you know and so she came into my room and she told me about it and i mean this was this was so potent to me because I asked God to show me hell and I asked him to show me hell on my terms, you know, like, let me see it as a spectator. I don't want to be, I don't want to be in there. I don't want to smell it. I don't want to see it. I just want, I just want to know it's a real place. And he doesn't do that. He shows me through my daughter. Mind you, she's, like I said, she's about seven at the time. I would never tell her I mean when I, I talk to her about God but I never tell her stuff like you know there are people burning in hell there are people tormenting in hell for one at that point in my life I wasn't really sure that that was true because I didn't want to believe it I didn't want to believe that that is the fate of that that is that is truly the wage of sin I just I didn't want to believe it because we're so accustomed to living in his grace. We're so accustomed to living in this world that has, you know, that it has everything we ever needed. It has, you know, it, it's full of everything. It's full of his grace and mercy. And we're so accustomed to it. It's almost like we're used to it that when it's gone, it's like, well, this isn't fair. Well, it was already a gift to begin with, you know? And so it was really hard for me to wrap my mind around the fact that this might be a real place and so he showed me through her which there's so many reasons I'm grateful for this I mean God knows what he's doing if he would show me on my own terms I probably would have tried to justify it and logically explain it by saying something to the extent well I've watched so many videos on YouTube and I've read so many testimonies you know of other people's visions of hell and what they've seen and near-death experiences that you know what? Maybe I'm just, I'm formulating my own thought. God knew that that would be something that I would probably at that point in my life try to come up with, you know, but he showed me through my daughter. The second thing I noticed about like what she told me in her dream was that she was like, I, 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 I'm really like cautious to use this word, but she was actually tempted. You know, she was tempted twice. The first time he said, you know, if you worship me, if you praise me, I will make you queen over all this land, you know, or all the souls, okay, over all the souls. And she said no. And then when she gets down, you know, and basically into hell, and he's he has her over there, you know, he asks her again, if this is your this is your last chance, you know, if you'll praise me and you if you worship me, I'll let you go. I'll send you free. She said, no, you don't, you're, you only do this to God and God rescued her. And in, in these really tough situations where we feel like God is so far from us and he doesn't hear us, he sees the whole time, the whole thing. And it's almost as if it was a test. And when I tell you that my heart was just like overjoyed with the fact that my daughter was able, able to even overcome that temptation that was even just in a dream. And you see, if I can say that I've not done, I, I've done so many things wrong in my life. I've done so many things wrong. But one thing I know is that me keeping my daughter aware of who God is and his presence and the importance of having a relationship with God. I know that is something that 
I'm supposed to do and I can say that I think I'm doing that right you know I've done so many things wrong and her response was proof that I'm doing something that that he finds um he, he finds satisfactory and so it just made me proud to know that she's listening and these Bible studies that we have before she goes to school in the morning and these praying sessions that we have and me talking to her that she's actually listening. And this was, this was about four years ago and she was seven at the time. And so, so she is, uh, she's 11 now and I'm just, I'm just so like, I think about it now and I still like want to cry because I've just made so many mistakes in my life and her response as a seven-year-old to to be willing to to not buck down it makes me know that that I'm doing something right well anyway I just wanted to share with you my testimony and uh if you're still watching or listening thank you for tuning in <laughs>